using tungsten to manufacture mechanical cable for surgical robotics. Hey everybody, Scott Daly here from Carl Stahl Sava Industries and I'm joined by Connor Chuchalo, one of our quality and life cycle testing engineers. Welcome, Connor. It's good to have you. Scott, thanks for having me on Yeah, again. it's a pleasure. I haven't done one of these in a while. I'm excited to do this with you. Today we're going to talk to Connor about tungsten and material itself and the interesting challenges and blessings that uh, it presents just as a material used to manufacture cable for surgical robotics. So let's start right there, Connor. Why tungsten? Why has the surgical robotics community rallied around this material and has decided this is the stuff we want to use to actuate pitch and yaw in our robots? Absolutely. It seems to definitely be the material of choice for a lot of these uh, medical robotics manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And that can be for several reasons. I'm going to go into a few. It, it handles precise loads very well. Um, that being said, a lot of materials do that. Sure, so yeah. why tungsten? Why tungsten? Um, alongside being able to handle high load or a precise load, it can do all of that in a very small form factor. So it can handle very small IDs mm -hmm. and cable diameters. With that being said, some materials might also do that. Sure, yeah. And the catch here is that tungsten is very malleable. The cable construction we usually make it out of is a 7x37 cable construction, and that has 259 individual wire strands inside of it, and they are very fine. And what this cable construction allows for is a very malleable material. It can go around tight bend radii effortlessly, and it can do all of that while retaining that strength and that very small form factor. So is, am I to understand that stainless, which has more of a springiness to it, sort of an urge to go back to its original form, were it making, a, let's say, a 180-degree turn around a tiny pulley, that it has this desire to kind of go back, whereas tungsten will just lazily fall around it? That's right. That's right. Um, stainless steel many times will have that springy, that want to hold its form, mm -hmm. Um, characteristic where tungsten will say hang over your hand like a shoelace right, it's a dead. very dead material yeah, right, that's right 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 so okay so understood uh, understanding that its malleability is what makes it preferential along I suppose along with its ability to just tolerate loads of all manner uh, what about it makes it particularly challenging to work with when you're using assemblies when you're introducing other components to the cable itself that's right. When we're adding mating components, say a ball fitting or an eyelet on the end of the cable, um, there can be certain um, features that are un unwanted and undesired. Um, one of these being the bird caging effect. When you crimp a fitting onto the cable, it can actually cause the cable to unravel and splay out, kind of like how a birdcage sure. wire would be. Right. So the filaments become distant from one another and exactly. not nested against each other. Exactly. Okay. So this is absolutely a failure and undesired by, say, a customer. And this problem can be mitigated by um, how the fitting is placed on the cable. So you might think that um, pressing a fitting on a cable might be a brute style kind of um, manufacturing technique, but it's actually very precise. And if you press on too hard, it might actually shear through the cable filaments, and that can actually cause um, lower pull strengths yeah, right. because there's yeah. less filaments to hang on to. Right. Um, if it's too loose then the fitting itself can slide and cause premature failure in that sense. Right. So to mitigate this problem, the fitting has to be pressed on at a very specific um, tolerance, a very specific fit that allows the cable to sit inside it perfectly without this bird caging effect. So once you've achieved the that sort of Goldilocks pounds of pressure mm -hmm. for the mating part, the ball is uh, in this scenario, and you know you're not seeing the filaments separating on the left and right of the ball. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine, but does solving that problem potentially introduce others where they're not necessarily as obvious as the cable filaments coming apart? Exactly, exactly. So this, whenever we solve one problem, it always opens up more problems down, down the line. Mm -hmm. If we solve the ball problem, it might 
now f sit on this cable completely fine, um, but the ends of the cable might not terminate well. The, if there isn't a fitting on them, they might want to unravel as well. Mm -hmm. So we also do um, certain terminations here at Carl Stahl Salva Industries, including electric cutting and plasma welding. Tungsten specifically on the ends wants to fray almost like a bouquet of flowers. Right. Where stainless Just steel kinda... might want to hold its shape. Exactly. So tungsten, when it frays out, we have to be able to solve that issue as well alongside the bird caging effect. Mm -hmm. So to do that, we do an operation called plasma welding where it's heated up to an incredible temperature and a bead forms on the end to fuse all the cable strands together without having to put a fitting on the end. And is it so that while I can show a, a prospect or our audience photographs of beautifully terminated tungsten cable ends, is it also true that that's not as that is as precise an operation because too much heat causes an unwanted consequence too little heat causes an, so I imagine as easy as it is for me to show the audience a photograph of a beautifully terminated tungsten cable end it was not beautiful getting there right it's a complicated exercise exact uh, formulaic exercise 100% it's an absolutely grueling process there's testing involved there's rigorous amounts of samples being created to test these features and these applications for the cable. So, right, so it's, again, it looks simple, small, miniature cable assembly, ball in the middle, terminated, nicely shiny terminated ends. There's a lot of R&D that's involved in that, that, it, that occurs Absolutely. collaboratively. I imagine you're working with your customer, with the, the design, the robotics design engineers on uh, how these materials need to be, how this cable assembly needs to look and, and cooperate, right? It's probably a fluid exchange of ideas, isn't it? Exactly. Getting on calls with some of these designers for these medical robotics is an absolute treat because they have information that I've never heard before, mm -hmm. so I'm always learning. And we have a myriad of data here at Carl Stahl that helps them benefit from these materials and this data as well when they come to us needing a specific load, um, a specific safety factor, mm -hmm. a specific um, cable diameter, we have the data and we have the ability to gather data as well with life cycle testing. Mm -hmm. And we can prove and validate that these um, assemblies will work all the time. And so once you've got it sussed out, once you know how much pressure to apply to the ball, you've got the ends terminated precisely as the customer needs them, Everybody's happy. Now you move from a prototype exercise where you've maybe produced a couple hundred of these to needing production purchase orders, right? Now you've got to produce thousands and thousands and thousands of these. That's right. Um, in a rather narrow period of time. I mean, the, remembering the, the proliferation of the surgical robotics category demands of folks like Sava to get this product in the hands of their robotics designers as fast so that they can take their product to market. What do you guys do as a you know as an engineering team here to go from tens and twenties of these things to thousands and thousands of these things? Yes. Yeah, so not only are we um, doing research and development on cable um, choice materials, we also are creating lean manufacturing processes across the board that allow this material to have low variation when being assembled and created. So the innovation, I don't mean to cut you off, but the innovation yeah. isn't stopping with the ball and terminating the ends perfectly. Now you have to invent ways to perfect this at a massive at scale. At a mass scale. So this involves automating the process and avoiding handling. And when I say handling, I actually mean physically handling the, ca the cable assembly, say by a hand. Mm -hmm. Having a Having that human error in your processes allows for different deviations or even failures of the cable. You could kink the cable or you can bend a fitting. So or... easily. I've handled this stuff. And I, when I just want to, and if there's just a little wave in it and I want to straighten it, all I have to do is this and I destroy it. Exactly. I pull apart the filaments the moment I slide my fingers across it like that. It's, it's designed to do one thing very, very well. Right. And anything outside of those specs can cause failure modes. It's interesting. That's an interesting point. Um, it, it, there's this concept that tungsten, because it's the strongest metal known to known to exist on Earth, that it trumps stainless 
period. As some wholesale statement, it's always better than stainless. That's not true of someone who tests cable, is it? Not always. And this is a video about tungsten, so I don't want to depart too much from that. But you get my like, talk a little bit about how you just made a really good point that this t- tungsten cable assembly is not intended to do two things. It's intended to do one thing. Mm-hmm. The moment you introduce these other things, it probably starts to look a lot like other cable materials. Exactly. That's where the life cycle testing comes into play. It's per use case scenario right. where tungsten might fit well in your applicational needs, right. where stainless steel might actually take the cake in another aspect. Right. Okay. But most of the time we're seeing that in medical robotics fields, they have small pulleys the size of the tip of a crayon, yeah. and they need to be able to maneuver these tight bend radii, and tungsten seems to do that with ease, according right. to the data. Right, right, right. So um, now that we've got, we're able to produce this at, at scale, what, what just share with me real quick, and then we'll wrap up. What's your favorite part of working with tungsten and working with the design engineers who are producing these surgical robotics? What's, what's such a pleasure about that particular transaction? The most satisfying part is being able to design with world-class designers, being able to work in tandem with some of these medical manufacturers. So all of these studies and all of these new assemblies coming allows for the engineering team to have a field day with design and testing. And that's the most exciting part is I get to find these problems and then try to solve them. And I imagine the collaboration, if that's what's pleasurable about it. If you could for a moment speak on behalf of the customer, I imagine that collaboration is satisfying to them too because you're perfecting a material, pardon me, a cable assembly mm-hmm. that on paper we're not sure about until we prove it out. Exactly. There's a lot of value add when getting on the phone with a manufacturer. Mm-hmm. They might have a lot of details about their own assembly, Um, but they lack the detail about the cable itself. And we have a plethora of knowledge about cable constructions, material choices, end terminations, and anything along those lines. So pitching in wherever we can is a very satisfying thing. Thanks, Connor. I appreciate it. It was a good conversation. Of course. You can find us uh, anywhere on social media. If you have uh, any thoughts on this video, please leave them in the comments. We really would enjoy hearing from you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Uh, You can find us at SavaCable.com. Contact us. Uh, We are a one-stop shop, very turnkey. We have a a tooling shop. We we can really handle pretty much any custom application you're looking to to engage in. So please take a look at us uh, on social media and look us up on our website. Connor, again, thanks so much. Thank you. And we'll talk to you real soon, everybody. Take care.